Hey, you ready to eat with me? Today I'm gonna show you what I eat in a day. And we're also gonna talk about how you specifically can use food combining to power your energy and sustain your energy for all the things you have packed into your day. Let's get into it. Good morning, fam. So I'm starting my day off with a green face mask. Yes, getting the skin together, purified and clear. And I'm starting my day off with a grapefruit aloe mint drink. I typically like to start my mornings off with something bitter because I had a history of serious sugar cravings. And I'd find that I wake up in the morning, have something sweet, a muffin, pancakes, French toast, biscuits, you name it. And then that would be my day. I just want more and more sweet stuff. And so when I became conscious about clearing out those sugar cravings, I realized that if I started my day with something bitter, that would train my taste bud for the rest of the day. So I'm starting off with this. While some folks might love lemon water, I love to combine grapefruit, aloe, and mint leaves. When you combine those together, my God, your digestive system is so pleased and so happy. That aloe is soothing to the tract and that grapefruit is cleansing, especially if you find yourself having a lot of mucus in the morning. And then the mint is just a wake up refresher. So this is what I start with. <laughs> How'd you enjoy that aloe grapefruit mint drink? I hope you give it a try, especially if you find yourself dealing with sugar cravings. But you know, planning what you eat in a day isn't just about dealing with physical ailments like sugar cravings or feeling bloated or whatever. I mean, that's part of it. Your meal should definitely be designed for your optimal health. But your meal should also be there to serve your vision. And part of my vision is to help the world eat better. And as the founder and director of the Mindful Nutrition School and the host and creator of The Mindful Plate, the YouTube channel you're watching now, I find that if I don't feed myself optimally, I don't have a very productive or creative day. So today, I have a lot on my plate. I'm taking you all with me. In order to sustain that type of day, I need the right type of food. So we're gonna go into the kitchen because as I'm preparing for my bike ride, I need something that is going to fuel me energetically so I can sustain the energy to ride as well as wake my brain up. And I need lots of brain power and focus. So we are going to be making an avocado ackee toast because mwah. let me show you how it's made. <laughs> So first, y'all, you want to start with a bread that you love. Now, to make this lovely toast, we're going to be using aki, which I've used before on my channel. You know, some of y'all have asked me about it. Some mixed peppers and onions, avocado, scotch bonnet, and this delicious Somalian coconut cilantro chutney. Now, the first thing I always do when I make any type of avocado toast is I prep my avocado. Now, a lot of folks use lime. I love lemon. Lemon gives me life with avocado. I don't know, it's something about the way it tangs. It just tangs just right. Now, I usually think about making my avocado like some type of guacamole, so I use whatever sauce I have on hand. Sometimes I use my own FP screen seasoning, but this time I'm using Bas Bas sauce. That's that Somalian coconut cilantro chutney. It is so good. Mm. So I mix that, the lemon, some salt. And then I mash it, but I make sure I leave it kind of chunky because I don't like my avocado too smooth. So next we want to make our ackee. So we're going to heat up a pan and we're using vegan ghee. Y'all, if y'all have not tried this vegan ghee from Trader Joe's, it is so good. It tastes delicious. It gives the flavor like it needs to. So we're using that. And then we're going to heat up the peppers and the onions. Now, sometimes I use fresh, but to be honest, the frozen works just as well. I'll either buy the frozen from Trader Joe's or I'll buy fresh, use what I use and whatever I don't use, I cut it up and put it in the freezer and use it for later. And then, because I don't want to burn off my mouth, I'm just adding a tad, hello, just a tad of scotch bonnet pepper just for the flavor. All right, so once all that is softened and sauteed, I'm going to add my ackee. Now, just so you know, off camera, I boiled it so I could get rid of that briny taste because when you get ackee in a can, it's sitting in brine. And I don't love that taste. Like, there's nothing like fresh ackee, but here in the States, it's kind of hard to get sometimes. So we're using the can. And it's very delicate, so you want to stir it gently because it will fall apart. And then to flavor it, I'm using onion salt, black garlic, and kelp granules. 
Honestly, you could use whatever you want, whatever you got on hand, whatever you have a taste for. That's just what I like. There's no there's no perfect magic way of doing this. Now, I'm not making traditional Jamaican ackee and saltfish. I would have seasoned that differently. And then because this is avocado toast, we got to toast the bread. So y'all see I put a little bit more oil on here, more of that vegan ghee. Y'all, I'm not skimping on the fat. The fat is part of the brain power. It's part of how I'm fueling myself for this morning breakfast. So I'm not skimping on that. So I put that on there, get it toasted good. Yeah, I spread on my avocado. I top it with my ackee. And y'all, because y'all already know, I am a flavor maximalist. I'm adding more black garlic. Plus it's cute, y'all. Look at those colors. Red, black, green, yellow. I love it. So anyways, that's that. And honey, breakfast is served. Didn't that look delicious? I know, it's one of my favorites. I could eat avocado toast every day, but I don't. Cause just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, especially if you know that bread can tend to clog you up. So I tend to use this bread from Trader Joe's and or a good sourdough because these are the breads that gives me the most digestive ease. And Lord knows I need digestive ease in my life. So thanks to this type of fuel, me and my bike are gonna have a great ride. And then when I come back, I'll get started with the rest of my work and then we'll have lunch. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Basically, like long story short, a year changed my life. I had a lot of loss in that year. Um, and I talk about it in some other videos. And I decided to make a decision to get my nutrition in order. And when I got my nutrition in order, I lost 60 pounds in one year, went from a size 12 to a size 2. And I also started heavily dealing with my emotional eating. And I realized that there is a segment of the population that loves food but also heavily struggles with it. So I started teaching these nutrition classes and workshops. Yes! So I just finished my meeting. I just went with Shauna. We had a great meeting. And y'all, I am hungry, okay? Hungry, hungry, hungry. So we are gonna go into the kitchen. We're gonna make a delicious jackfruit kebab because I'm feeling for something meaty but without the meat, you feel me? Hello. Over some green salad, I want something fresh. You know, that bike ride, it didn't take my energy out. It actually brought my energy up, but it left the sister hungry. And when I came back, I had to go straight into the meeting. So now I'm hungry and I'm ready to go eat. Let's go. Yes, y'all. So first we're gonna prep the salad. Now remember how I started my day with that bitter because I was telling y'all that it helps direct my taste buds for the rest of the day so I'm not craving sweet things. Well, I'm gonna be using dandelion in this salad. Dandelion is a bitter green, and y'all, the liver loves bitter. So if you're not eating enough bitter, do your liver a favor, make love to it and eat some bitter. So I'm gonna make sure I feed my liver intentionally because it does so much for me and I wanna continue to doing so much for me. Keep that liver in order, eat the bitter. So I'm using a bitter, and then I'm just gonna add in this kale. What I love about kale is kale to me is kind of like a broom. Like it just goes into your colon, starts sweeping all that ish out. So we got the bitter, we got the broom. We have a whole power of health right here in this bowl. And then, you know, once I get all my greens together, I always massage it because these greens are kind of rough. I don't know if you ever had kale just on its own. It's a little rough. So we want to massage it. So we're going to use a little bit of oil, 
some salt and some seasonings. I'm using some garlic powder, some onion powder, but you can use whatever you like. Think about it as if you were just seasoning your, your meal. Just add whatever makes sense to your taste buds. And this just softens the leaves so that they're more palatable. You can massage as long as you like. I promise you, the longer you massage it, it's almost like it cooked, right? Like you added heat. Think about yourself when you get a massage, like you just soften up and relax. That's the same thing you're doing to these leaves. And so after that, I want to add in the rest of my vegetables. Now, I have some cucumbers here, but since they're not organic, you do see me peeling off their skin. And if you've ever heard about the Dirty Dozen or the Clean 15, that's a really easy trick in learning how to cook, prepare, or use organic or conventional fruits and vegetables. So the Dirty Dozen is basically those that, um, well, they're dirty. <laughs> Anything that we eat the skin, like cherries, uh, strawberries, cucumbers, tomatoes, if those are conventional, it's always best to kind of remove the skin because those have the most contact with the pesticides and any other chemicals they use on them. If they're organic, it's a lot safer to eat them with the skin on. And then the Clean 15 is basically your stuff like potatoes, onions, things that grow underground, things that have a natural protective layer like bananas, etc. cetera. Um, those, if you buy them conventional, it's not the end of the world because they already have a natural protective layer on them. So that's one way to think about it. So that's why I'm pulling these cucumbers because they're not organic. For my tomatoes, they are organic, so I'm going to go ahead and slice them up. And y'all, you see how beautifully these are slicing? That's because I'm using a serrated knife. Serrated knives are game changers because they help keep the form when you're cutting. You ever use a regular knife to cut a tomato and it squishes all over the place? Get you a serrated knife. Put you on game. It's great for bread. It's great for tomatoes. Serrated knives are everything. Now, because I'm going for this Mediterranean vibe with my meal here, I'm going to add in some olive tapenade. Mm. If you have not gotten on olive tapenade, you need to get on it, especially if you are plant-based, because olive tapenade gives like meaty flavors, which I love. It kind of reminds me of like maybe beef or I don't know. I just like the flavor of it. So I add olive tapenade to my salad greens because I want that flavor and not just bland green. So I mix all that in. And then after it's all mixed in, I'm gonna put this to the side, let it sit. So when I come back to it, those flavors have deepened over time. Now next is my jackfruit kebabs. Yes, all right. Now I'm gonna start by prepping my yellow bell pepper, my purple onion. You see me cutting off the sticker because why? Why are we putting stickers on vegetables, y'all? Like my first job was at a grocery store and I was a bagger and a cashier and as a cashier, we just memorized the codes and we knew what things were. So they didn't have to put a sticker on everything. So all this putting stickers on food, it just it's annoying. But I cut it off because I know a lot of people will just peel it. But that residue from the sticker is still on the skin. I don't want to eat it. I don't want it in my body. So I just cut it off. And then, you know, once I get them all prepped up, I just start um, cutting them up and getting them ready so that they're shaped well to work on a skewer. And y'all, I use these particularly because of their color and their sweet taste. I just think that that purple and that yellow is just going to be so beautiful against that green and brown. So, you know, but you'll see when we when we finish it. So anyways, all right. So now that we're done, I'm going to take that same vegan ghee and I'm going to heat it up. And I just want to slightly heat the veggies so they can get a bit of a grill mark. But I want them to keep their firmness because I like that crispness when I bite into them. Like I'm thinking about if I were to grill these outside, that's the that's the texture I want. All right, so once I got the veggies done, I put them to the side. And now it's time to prep the jackfruit. Okay, I have a whole video on this, y'all. I've done this many times before. It's one of my favorite mock meats to make. And so I'll link the video below so you can get all the details. Um, and if you want the full recipe, the recipe is in my cookbook, The Mindful Plate. And um, trust me, you will you will thank me for this. It's, it's one of the best meat replacements. To season it, I'm going to be using Zug. Now, Zug is a Yemeni's uh, spice blend. And um, if you think of like taking Mediterranean and African flavors and blending it, that's the perfect harmony you find in this Yemeni sauce. And then I have some leftover oil when I was cooking the peppers and onions, girl. Waste not. Hello, we putting this right in there because that oil is now flavored. And remember, because this isn't real meat, it doesn't have any fat. So we're going to add a little bit of fat using that oil. And then we're going to add lemon juice and some salt and just mix it all up. 
And, um, you know, when I make this meat, I usually make a whole batch at a time. I store it in the freezer, and then I just defrost it and reheat it anytime I want meaty textures with my meals. And you could bake these in the oven, but y'all, I'm a fan of frying because the texture just hits so well. So, you know, one of my favorite things to do is to peruse the aisles of grocery stores in search of new sauces and new things. So I found this chimichurri sauce, and um, it is delicious. So I decided to combine it with some minced garlic and I was gonna brush it on the jackfruit afterwards because I thought it would give it a nice finish and like, you know, give it a nice texture and taste afterwards. Oh, some of y'all wanna see the inside. Y'all y'all don't believe me. Y'all like, yeah, 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 mock meat, my foot. Listen, look inside this, L look at that. It bites, it pulls apart just like meat. Like jackfruit is a winner when you're trying to replace meat and you don't want gluten or soy. This hits. And there it is, folks. That's it. All skewered and done. And I'm going to serve this on a bed of salad. It's ready to eat. And then because I'm a flavor maximalist, hello, <laughs> I am adding my favorite vegan ranch style dressing. I get this from Trader Joe's. Sometimes they be running out and I get a little sad because I don't know how to replicate it yet. But I'm going to learn. But until then, we go to Trader Joe's, we buy, and we enjoy. you all for joining me in this what i eat in a day video if you like the recipes be sure to check out the mindful plate cookbook and remember your meals should serve your purpose so whatever you got going on for your day make sure you feed yourself accordingly all right y'all until next time eat well and be well